alrighty. Check one, check one. Check one, two. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Afro Matt Show. I'm your host, Afro Matt, as usual. And today is July 10th. It's a Monday. This is probably com- I, this is coming out probably on a Monday. I guess Monday seems to be the best day that these are going to come out. So they're going to come out Monday. You can guarantee that there'll be an episode every week. You cannot guarantee what day it is. But I'm going to try to get it out early in the week, like Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday is a good day for editing. Like if I have a long episode or if an episode gets dicey, we'll be chopping it up on Monday and probably releasing it on Tuesday. Um, and that's how this, that's how this, uh, if you're new here, that's how this podcast goes. It's completely unscripted. We go off the dome. We talk about news. We try to make it fun. I, the news sucks, but this it, it's, it's fun. What we do here is fun and we get wet and we get dirty. Um, and we get into it. So um, if you're new here, thanks for joining. If you're not, and if you're a returning customer, thank you again for joining. Um, you know, I always like to see happy returning faces. That being said, let's get right into the news. And this is the news segment. The news segment is indicated by this noise. Because it's news-like. There it is. That's it. This is it. This is the news. This is premium news. Honestly, the news you get on this channel is probably less biased than any news ever. Of all time. We tell you the facts. And I add a little bit of my own, um, you know, an op-ed piece. A little opinion. A little opinion section. But, um, you know, I like to get cool stories. A lot of the stuff I cover on this channel... You won't see covered by Fox News. You won't see covered by CNN. You won't even see it covered by, um, you know, BBC, the Big Black Cock Network. You you won't see it covered by any of this. Um, but we cover them all. So let's get into this. Um, Native America, and we and we do get, we do get pretty interesting. So here, Native Americans. I love it when a I love it when a story starts with Native Americans, just Native Americans. So Indigenous Chief wants to take back Ben and Jerry's HQ. So the Native Americans are going to war with Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry are uh, apparently they have their HQ built on stolen land. And uh, so this was this was news as Friday. Is this person talking about it? Oh, this is one of those, uh, okay, whatever. An indigenous tribe descendant, uh, descended of the North, uh, the Native American Nash nation that originally controlled the land in Vermont, the Ben and Jerry's headquarters is located on, would be interested in taking it back, its chief said, after the company publicly called for stolen lands to be returned. Oh, that's kind of a, damn, that's kind of a got you moment. So, wait, let me see, let me click this link. So what Ben and Jerry said, Ben and Jerry suggests returning stolen indigenous land in July 4th message. Ben and Jerry, this is their tweet from July 4th. This July 4th, it's high time we recognize that the U.S. exists on stolen indigenous land and commit to returning it. Learn more, take action now. And then they linked to their, so then, oh my God. So then someone, so the chief said, yeah, hey, I saw your tweet. Yeah, we want we uh we want your headquarters. <laughs> uh, it's, dude, it'll be interesting to see how Ben and Jerry react. Um, I like how we talk about Ben and Jerry's. Like it's Ben and Jerry. They are the two heads of the the organization. So Ben and Jerry, damn, that's kind of caught in a pickle because they tweeted and they're like, "Hey guys, we're really woke." stolen give back your stolen land and then they got called out and they're like well we don't want to give up our hq not our hq that was like the whole like black lives matter hey black lives matters but over there can we can we just keep it out of my neighborhood please can you burn down your own neighborhood um but yeah this is interesting don stevens 
chief of the um, Nolhegan band of the Kusuk. Um, I'm going to butcher this. The Kusuk Abenaki Nation, one of the four descended from the Abenaki that are recognized in Vermont, told Newsweek, it's always interested in reclaiming the stewardship of our land, but the company has yet to the, to approach them. It comes after the ice cream company uh, was questioned as to when it would give up its Burlington, Vermont headquarters, which sits on a vast swath of U.S. territory that was under the um, auspices of the Abenaki people. Jesus, this is they got themselves into a bit a bit of a pickle. Yo, this is when woke uh, going woke it turns bad. I, I would I would love to see them have to forcibly give back their land. It would be just so funny. Their tweet they they are they caught themselves in a pickle. This would put Ben and Jerry's headquarters located in Business Park on southern Bur- in southern Burlington within the western portion of the historic territory, though it does not sit on modern day tribal lands. We are always interested in reclaiming stewardship of our lands through our traditional territories and providing opportunities to uplift the communities. Stephen. Um, Stephen's not a very Indian name, but I, I think that they have like, they have like normal names now. Um, according to historical records, the Abenaki initially traded the European settlers of the 16, 16th century, but their population was affected by the spread of old world diseases. The Confederacy allied with the French colonizers against English settlers in growing territorial disputes before many fled to what is now Canada following a series of defeats at the hand of the English. During the early part of... Dude, the ethno... Wait, what? Uh... During the late part of the 20th century, a state-sponsored eugenics program in Vermont saw some Abenaki sterilized. The Nolhagen Abenaki tribe has described this as ethnocide. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Ben and Jerry's. You're, you got yourself into a pickle here. Ben and Jerry has found Ben and Jerry have found themselves in a bit of a pickle. Um, here is my advice. Here, here's my advice, Ben and Jerry. Here's what you got to do. You got to say, yeah, we'll give you your land back, but we're going to keep our headquarters there, but only employ it with Native American Abenaki tribe. So you're on your land. You kind of have it back. You don't have the building, but you're, you have the building. Your guys are all in the building. You're working, you know, only employ Native Americans. That's my piece of advice for Ben and Jerry. That's what I would do. I would say, hey, we're firing all of our staff and we're only hiring Native Americans. This is because we don't want to be colonizers on Native American territory. And we want to uh, we don't really want to give back our land because we paid for it. We stole it. And well, we paid for it. We bought it from the people that stole it or that bought it from the people that bought it from the people that stole it. But I mean, then again, what land isn't stolen? That that could be a tweet. What if they come out with the next tweet and they're like, "Well, actually, all land is technically stolen. Where no one owns the earth." They come in, they come out, and they have like a crazy. They they switch up real quick. Well, no one owns part of the earth. If I had enough weapons, I could come and take it myself. They call for they call for violence. How, it, it, <laughs> they tell the Abenaki tribe, "How about you come and take it." Come and take it. Come, I want to see you try. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. Who remembers the Alamo? Who remembers Ben and Jerry? The the last stand at Ben and Jerry's headquarters in Vermont. <laughs> oh, man, that is good. That uh, News like that makes me makes me happy. Because we get so much news like, oh, World War III is about to happen. But then every now and then you get a, a nice happy story about a native tribe that wants their land back. But, oopsie, a giant factory making ice cream is on it. My bad. I don't. It's not, it's not a factory. It's probably just like, I mean, I'm going to be frank, Indian people in the headquarters, you know, doing stuff for Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry might not even be there. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Let's move along. Ooh, 
Oh man, I kind of wanted to save this for later. This story is wild. What? Dude, the story got deleted. Oh my god. So this story that I had copy and pasted in here. Look, look at the look at the this is the URL for this story that that CB, CBNC uh CNBC says something rent 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 went wrong. Access the NBC News is temporary off unavailable. The problem will resolve as soon as as soon as possible. This is the news that I had. The NBC uh nbcnews.com forward slash politics forward slash white dash house lab test confirms white substance found in white house is cocaine that's like the that is the url that's crazy and it's not working because obviously they want to suppress the fact that um or or nbc might just be down let's see um cocaine in in the white house Here we go. <clears throat> Cocaine found in the White House was in a different location than previously reported. I like how this is. They're trying to put on pot. They're trying to put a positive spin on this. This is this is like the extent at which m the media will go to change the story. They're like, yeah, we found cocaine, but it wasn't in the bathroom. They weren't, we can't, we can't assume that they were doing it in the bathroom. It was in the bedroom where you do cocaine. Breaking news, updating the Secret Service investigation into trying to figure. How crazy, how crazy is this? They found cocaine in the White House. I was going to, there was going to be a joke or whatever about the White House, but this is coming out a little bit late and I feel like everyone's probably made all those jokes, but it's just how insane is it that they found literal cocaine in the actual White House? Also, Joe Biden, I'm going to talk directly to Joe Biden. I'm going to talk to the U.S. president right now. Keep your son out of the White House. It's bad news. I know he was there. Where do you think the cocaine came from? Keep him out of the White House for as long as possible. It'll save yourself in the long run. It it's crazy. Figure out who left that small bag of cocaine at the White House. NBC News has now learned the bag was found in the West Wing on Sunday. Will now be tested for DNA and fingerprints, <laughs> and the investigation could be completed by. Monday. I mean, look, you don't need to be a genius to know whose cocaine that is. You don't need to be a genius. It was Hunter Biden's cocaine. Um, I'm I I'm almost positive of it. Hunter Biden's a fiend. He's a fiend. Of course, they're probably going to put some Patsy. It's going to be some... They're going to throw some intern under the bus. Yeah, it was an intern. An intern walked in and started doing cocaine. We're like, whoa, dude, whoa. You can't do that here. You can't just do that here, bro. That's not how this White House th shit works, bro. Yeah, a crazy man. A crazy man in a tuxedo came in and started doing all of our cocaine. And we're like, dude, you can't be doing this. And and, and he left and he left a perfect a perfect bag. And he said, save that for later. And then, and we didn't want to touch it. And then someone came in and, and, and now their story's getting crazy. They're like, and then someone came in and then the CIA came in and they were all men in black and they started zapping people's memory to make us forget about it. So I don't even know who did the cocaine. I actually don't know. Monday. Joining me now is NBC News senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell. But Kelly, the big change is where this was found. And it was found, Why does um, this matter? my observation, in a much more secure place, limited access place. This, why? <laughs> Dude, this is how much, if, if okay, l listen, and a lot of people say this, if this happened under Trump, it would be crazy. It would be the only thing people are talking about. I guarantee it. They would be like, I know it. I knew it. I knew it all along. Trump was on cocaine. Trump's been doing cocaine for the last 15 years. Trump's a cocaine maniac. He's actually spo he's actually sponsored by cocaine. He has the cocaine swoosh. Um, you know, if this happened under Trump, it would be the only thing people are talking about. This happened under Biden. And she's like, you know what? Actually, it's not that bad. It, it was in a secure location. It was actually kind of actually where they had it was actually kind of chill. And that's where I would have put it if it, if I had it in that West Wing reception area. It's still a publicly trafficked, a frequently trafficked place. Publicly trafficked. It's down. That's, 
That's a crazy mess up on live television. You don't want to be oh. saying anything about traffic. I'm sure I'm sure it's publicly trafficked. Um, by my observation, in a much <laughs> more secure slip. place, limited access place, <laughs> in that West Wing reception area. It's still a publicly trafficked, a, a frequently trafficked place, <laughs> but it's down near the Situation Room, right off West Executive, down below. And normal people, just average people, just can't get in there, even with the entry from the Northwest Gate. Well, let me let me bring you up to date with the reporting that I have. What we have learned is that there are, in fact, two West Wing entrances. You know that. I know that. But for the benefit of our audience. And now the investigation has progressed. And so they're saying the West executive entrance, which, as you noted, is closer to the Situation Room and closer uh, to uh, the Navy mess where there's the facilities for food and so forth. It is uh, also next to West Executive Drive. That's where, for example, the vice president's vehicle is parked. However, it is a is high traffic saying, area. Is she saying Kamala Harris had something to do with this cocaine? And by that, I mean you do have uh, people who work here in all kinds of jobs, not just political jobs, uh, the military facilities, people who work uh, for the operations of the White House. And they do have uh, the tours that go through there if they are among the private tours. This is this is my impression of Hunter Biden watching this news. That's not good. That's not good. My dad's going to kill me with staffers as sort of a sponsored member. So very high traffic. Uh, the oh. fact that it's close to the Situation Room is certainly uh, notable. Uh, we had earlier uh, been told that it was one level above and also a lobby area Why does in it the matter? West Wing. Why does it matter where it is? Uh, this is the craziest thing. They're not even talking about, okay, who's doing it? It should be the question. Who's doing it? Why, like, how much, are they running it? Are they trafficking? Are they... Are they selling drugs out of there? Where are these people getting the drugs? What are they doing it for? I mean, they like, yeah. I, I, hey, do a little cocaine every now and then. That's actually not that bad. Doing cocaine at the White House is expected. But I want to know whose it is. That's all I'm saying. Wing, closer to where the Oval Office is. This is down below. The other important news is we had been told the investigation could take a couple of weeks. They're now revising that timeline and saying by Monday, perhaps even. They're, they actually revised that timeline and said we will not have any any uh, any evidence because we have used all of the cocaine. We have snorted it all. Um, so we cannot do DNA tests on it. Sorry, guys. Um, the CIA comes out and they're like noses are. <laughs> Oh, yeah, guys, sorry, we lost it. My bad. My bad. But earlier, they anticipate uh, having reviewed all the important material they need to review. DNA and fingerprinting testing has been going on. I'm told additional testing is happening today. That's a door, a door dasher just walked past the White House. I, I, I think that's a door dasher that just walked past the White House in the back of her video. Important news is we had been told the investigation could take a couple of weeks. They're now revising that timeline and saying by Monday, perhaps even earlier, they anticipate uh, having reviewed all the important material they need to review. DNA and fingerprinting testing has been going on. Do this is a door dasher. She's holding a, she's holding like a, like a bag of food and it has the, the strip that they put for door dashers so that they know that you don't tamper with their shit. Seems pretty secure. You got it locked down. I'm told additional testing is happening today. And the key thing is that multiple officials are cautioning that it is unlikely uh, and certainly possible uh, that there would be a resolution to this, meaning forensic Great. evidence found. It's completely possible. Guys, imagine if, imagine if, imagine a world where there's cocaine found in, in the White House of all places. And they said, it's, it's entirely possible that we solve this thing. Found ...that could identify an individual. Scanning the video, doing the testing. So they have video? Okay. I mean, this whole thing is crazy. And um, I guarantee you, the, dude, the second they look at the video, it's just Hunter Biden doing like, it's, when they say a bag of cocaine, they mean like a, a giant satchel just full of cocaine. 
Yeah, like yeah, we found a bag of cocaine, and everyone thinks like just a little dime bag, but it's actually just his satchel, his his laptop bag, which he doesn't need it for a laptop anymore, is full of just cocaine, and he's just like scooping. He just sticks his whole head into the bag, and everyone everyone watching is like. Everyone's looking at everyone slowly turns towards Biden while he's watching it and he's like Uh that's my son. I like I like when little kids play with my leg hairs. Forensic work on the cocaine bag confer- uh, continued Thursday, though officials are setting uh low expectations for what they'll be able to identify who left it. So is it really so the forensics experts can't even tell who's I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if they really wanted to, they could find out whose cocaine this is. I feel like if you leave, like, a half-smoked joint on the ground where it's illegal, they'll find whose joint that is, and they'll find you. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, I want to see how this wrapped up, because that was a few days ago. Cocaine in the White House. Investigation wraps up. Found at the White House earlier this month is wrapping up. We could even see a final report later today. The illegal drugs were found on the ground floor of the West Wing. Awesome. Cool. As early as uh, Monday evening. Well, it is Monday right now and I've not heard anything. So maybe we'll know next week who's cocaine, who is rocking it hard at the, at the White House. Getting a lot of work done. I honestly probably getting a lot of work done. Just getting wired and what what type of work even goes on at the White House? Prying on uh individuals, you know, private shenanigans, whatever's going on. Probably not much, honestly, at the White House. I feel like I feel like at, at the White House, a lot of people just walk around and they look really busy and super fancy. They sit down and they send like eight, probably 18 emails and uh, respond to, to like 30. And then they probably just are like good to go. They're like, all right, good. We're not much else we can do. It kind of runs itself. It's kind of how I imagine like Twitter goes. <clears throat> all right, let's continue with the news here. The new France law that will allow police to spy on its citizens. So, as you know, France is in up uproar right now. They're they're in a total like revolt. They're driving cars into buildings, uh, attempted assassinations on governors, um, a lot of other awesome stuff. And they are so now the police are saying. Well, for the betterment of everyone, for everyone's safety, and any time... Okay, I'm going to say this, and this better stick with you, if you're listening. Because this is... If there's one thing I say that sticks with you, this better be it. Um, anytime anyone says, for your safety, we're doing this, that is 100% a bad thing for everyone. For everyone. Hey guys, for your safety, um, we're going to track everyone's information to see if they're they're making a bomb. We know you're not making a bomb. You're not going to be making a bomb, right? But we're going to track everyone's information to make sure that you're not. We don't think you are. We don't think you are, but it's the implication that you might. I'm not saying that you want to, but you could. So we're going to track all your information and we're going to buy and sell and trade and forward and copy and paste and sell again and then harvest and then reanalyze and then double check and then scout and then scour and then download and then export that information several, several thousand times to several different companies and it'll be a, a new mining. We're going to be mining. We're no longer mining the earth. We're mining our own citizens really um so but it's for your safety guys it's for your safety you don't want your neighbor building a bomb you don't want that guy building a bomb so let us help you help us help you and just let us it's so chill 
It's so chill. We know you're not going to do it. And you know that you're not going to do it. But we don't know that you're not going to do it. So let's be super chill about this. We're all adults. We're all adults here. So how about you be chill? I'm chill. I'm so chill right now. I'm actually so chill. So we're just going to take a look. See, we're just going to take a peek. We're just going to take a little peek, little peek, and just look every now and then to see what you're up to. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad. It's not going to be bad. You're so chill. Look at you. You're so fucking chill right now. I'm just, we're just going to take a little peek every now and then. It's not, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's for our safety. It's for everyone's safety. Help me, help us help you help your neighbor, right? That's what they're saying right now. So France, France is on that vibe. France is on that vibe. Um, the new law in France allows police to spy on its citizens. Yeah, you don't want your neighbor to be a, uh, a terrorist, do you? Well, let us help you help your neighbor not be a terrorist. So the French police will now be able to spy on suspects involved in crimes with other devices, including phones, amid the sea of protests in France over the police killing of 17-year-old... Um, the government in France has passed a law that allowed police to spy on people. Late Wednesday, lawmakers agreed that police in, Fran in France should be able to spy on suspects by remotely activating a camera, microphone, and GPS on their phones and other gadgets. With 80 votes in favor, it appears that this is a frightening prospect, prospect will become a reality. The snooping clause, which is a part of a large justice reform bill, has been criticized by the left human rights activists as an authoritarian stu uh, snoopers charter. Once it becomes a law, avoiding the governmental surveillance would be impossible. Hey, join the club! Even with VPN services and encrypting, encrypted messaging. Hey, join the club, guys. Hey, everyone hop in the mass surveillance state that we live in. Um, the, the mass surveillance to where you won't be able to do anything that's not cool um, with the government. Um, I guarantee you, um, you know, if you've ever watched a TikTok where they've quoted um, Ted Kaczynski, you're on the list. Uh, if you've ever read uh, Karl Marx, you're on the list. They don't like that. Um, I don't. I don't even. I don't even. I haven't read that book, but I'm sure a lot of people don't like it. So. Who knows what's in it? But, um, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of lists, and they're, they're checking it tight. They're Santa Claus. The U.S. government is Santa Claus. Santa Claus. And they check that list twice. I mean, and they sell it. So, um, I mean, it is what it is. So, in our country, it wasn't riots that caused this. It was the Patriot Act after... The Patriot Act was after 9-11, they said, and how could you be against something called the Patriot Act? Being against the Patriot Act, Patriot Act is in of itself unpatriotic. How could you be against it? It's called the Patriot Act. It's so chill. You know, they even name it shit like that to just confused, dumb, and retarded people. Um, at least this one they named the snooping clause. This one makes sense. This one actually is named how it's supposed to be. America uses double speak to trick you into thinking it's good. Yeah, we're the the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act will include um, NSA mass surveillance on you, um, which Edward Snowden released and then was subsequent subsequently uh, charged with like grand treason and uh, hunted, and now he lives in Moscow, Russia. Uh, so, you know, it's bad. Imagine if he didn't, imagine a world where, um, he didn't leak that and, um, and we just like, we didn't know the NSA existed. Now that, now the government has to come out and be like, oh yeah, well we, we spy, but it's like, it's like chill though. It's like super chill. But yeah, no, France, join the club, get on in. Get on into the mass surveillance state. I feel like you could, in this country, in this world, you could move to the most rem remote uh, forest dwelling. You could build yourself a little fort, and the government could follow your little paper trail. Oh, you own that property. You pay property taxes. We're going to follow you, and we're going to see what you're up to. We're going to send a drone just to peek in every now and then. You'll wake up in your unair-conditioned uh shack in the middle of the woods 
and you'll hear a buzzing noise. You'll look outside, and it's a drone. They just want to check in. What's up, dude? What are you working on? What are you doing out here? Um, but, um, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's big brother. Um, it's big brother. It's, uh, that's the thing about like a lot of these like post-apocalyptic stories. It's like, yeah, it's like in 1984, it's like double speak and, and it's like big brother and then brave new world. It's like, well, everyone's happy now. And, you know, I, I think, and then it's like, the Hunger Games. Yeah, well, everyone fights to the death because they're poor. Well, I think that um, the real reality of the future is a combination of all those fun aspects. People fighting each other to the death um, in a Mr. Beast video, which we all enjoy, which makes us all happy. And we're all on drugs because the pharmaceutical companies rule the world. And um, well, no one owns property because of BlackRock. And we're in a constant state of war, like in 1984, because that's what our economy runs on now. And um, and we're constantly surveilled. So, I mean, it's a combination of all of them. It's really fun. It's really goofy. And it's getting a little wet and wild. So, um, let's continue. <clears throat> Despite the outcry, uh, DuPont... Mortelli maintains that the law will save many people's lives. Nice. This is for your sake. We're far away from the totalitarian uh, the totalitarianism of 1984 George Orwell, Orwell's novel about a society under total surveillance, Dupont said. Um, well, the contested measure part of the article contained several other provisions was voted uh, through... Um, through Parliament, the opposition parties and rights groups were concerned that the Macron government is using this as a smokescreen to a establish a surveillance state. However, the justice minister claims that the law and its provisions will only be applied to a dozen cases a year. Yeah, when in the, when in the course of history has anyone never abused power? When has... When has the ability to do something never been abused, even pushed a little bit further? And then the next person that gets the job pushes it a little bit further. And then the next person that gets a job makes it the norm to do that. And they're like, well, we're barely doing the bare minimum. When if you look at it in the past, you're like, well, we never had this. That's the problem, really, is they slowly and slowly chip away at your rights to where you don't even realize how good it was when you didn't have them. Um it's like if you look at the world, if you had a if you had time travel and you could look at the world 20 years from now, you'd be like, well, that's a shitty ass world. We're all no one's allowed to go outside because COVID 20, whatever um, is is rampaging, uh, you know, a new a new virus that uh, Dr. Fauci made in the Wuhan lab. I'm really trying to get this video removed by saying all the buzzword uh, Dr. Fauci, which he made in a lab is uh is ravaging the world you're not allowed to go outside if you are going outside you're gonna be killed mowed down by dogs but if you look at it now i mean looking at that now it seems crazy but then slowly they chip away and they're like well the dogs are kind of chill though the dogs that walk around and they can deliver pizza do you want a dog that can deliver pizza and also deliver death and shoot you if you go outside that's what we're gonna have a pizza delivering dog service it also secure it also it's also a police surveillance system, but it delivers pizza if you're good. It dispenses a, a little pizza, a slice. It keeps it warm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this whole country, we're completely... this. Not even this country, because obviously France is having the problem. It is so corrupt. The only way to fix it is burning it down to the ground. That's the only way. And I'm not calling for violence. I'm not calling for anything because, honestly, I don't think that's enough. Um, it has to be a total sort of, like, just reforming of everything. And it's like, in the book, in the Dune books, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start quoting actual science fiction. In the Dune book, um, they, um, they have, like, a revolution against these machines that take over the world. Um, and it's called, like, the butlerian jihad and they they take back the power from the 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 technology and then they ban the use of technology 
forever. They say nothing is to be above the sanctity of human life or whatever, or human knowledge. And then, so, I mean, that that's the extreme that people, that it needs to be like, just ban all electronic thinking. They call them thinking machine. Any machine that has a capability of think, of thought, of think. Jesus, I'm retarded. I don't have the capability. Let's move on. Um, oh, this is a fun one. California man sentenced to over six years in prison for $8.7 million cow manure Ponzi scheme. These are the kind of business, small business startups that I would li- I like to support. So let's read on. A man from California who ran a multi-million dollar fraud scheme where he claimed to turn cow manure into green en- energy has been sentenced to over six years in prison. Love that. R- Ray Brewer, 66, stole over $8.7 million from investors. Court records between March of 2014 and December 20, uh, 2019. Brewer's, Brewer's scam involved convincing investor he could build an anaerobic digesters, large machines that create methane through microorganisms breaking down biodegradable, de, biodegradable material on diaries in several California, Idaho countries. The U.S. Attorney's Office method can be sold to the open market as green energy. Interesting. I respect this man's hustle. I respect his hustle. After receiving the investor's funds, authorities said he transferred the money to bank accounts opened in a few names as his aliases. That's awesome. In some cases, Brewer offered refunds that came in the form of newly received money from other investors. Classic. Classic. Brewer assumed a new identity and relocated to Montana after his... After his his investors became aware of his fraud, when he was arrested, Brewer attempted to trick authorities by telling him that he had the wrong person. He had also he also told uh, officers stories about being in the Navy and how he had once saved several soldiers during a fire by blocking the flames with his body so that they could escape. He's a he's a real hero. Um, Tales he later admitted were lies that meant to curry favor with the law enforcement. Um, <laughs> Jesus, this guy, honestly, he didn't get enough. Some of Brewer's purchases with the stolen money included two plots of land with 10 acres, um, a custom 3,700 square foot home and two new pickup trucks. Um, that's not that much for $8 million. My man could have done a lot more. Honestly, he could have done a lot more in general, but. Yeah, eight million. He stopped too soon. He thought too small. Take this big. How about instead of cow manure, you say, "Turn your own shit into money." You poop, I pay. Start turning into that. Start thinking bigger. Give me your poop. This guy. This is literally what this guy needs to do. Next time, when he gets out of prison, he'll he'll re. Give me your poop, and I will pay you. And then just a Ponzi scheme, where. Um, well, I actually don't know how that would work because what you're going to, you can't just pay people poop. (laughs) This is why I'm not a Ponzi. It it worked better in my head. All right. Let's, um, let's continue with the news. I had, I have no idea where that was going. How do you make money from that? How do you make You just go. You just go bankrupt by people's shit. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Oh, God. <clears throat> oh. oh, man, that was good. Okay, Maryland man steals forklift from Lowe's and fatally mows down woman at Home Depot. For ...that the man who allegedly stole the forklift from the Lowe's was an employee at the store... And he brought it to this Home Deep. This is the definition of a turf war. This guy who works at Lowe's. Is a shocking and bizarre story that involves two home improvement stores. The Charles County Sheriff's Office confirming with News 4 that the man who allegedly stole the forklift from the Lowe's was an employee at the store. And he brought it to this Home Depot, which is just about a half mile away. Investigators say that man drove into this parking lot 
and found a car was parked here. He rammed the forklift into that car. A woman was asleep inside the car. She tried to get out and run away. Investigators say the man then ran her over with the forklift and killed her. This Holy. is absolutely a tragic story. It's yeah. bizarre. We don't know why the suspect did this. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. I don't know if we'll ever get an answer. Um, the victim wasn't doing anything but sleeping in her vehicle. The sheriff's office says 20-year-old Bryce Brown ran over 73-year-old Gloristine Pinckney. Then officers say Brown took off in the victim's car. There is no Jesus. evidence that the victim and suspect knew each other. This appears to be a random attack and again for reasons that are not clear. Investigators say the holy shit. Did she work there? Is what you got to first off, you got to check to make sure that that woman wasn't sleeping on the clock. Got to make sure she wasn't. Was she clocked out? Got to make sure Lowe's is making their profit and not having any time stolen because that would be the most that would be a major offense. It goes crime, it goes it goes murder, you know, my bad. It goes time stolen, clock clock theft, time theft. And then murder. So I would double check. I would double check, make sure she was off the clock, clock if she was sleeping. And I would make sure that the forklift driver that worked for Home Depot was also off the clock. Because you don't want murder on the clock, especially if you're Home Depot. That's not something you want. Can you clock out before you kill, please? And I'm not trying to make light of this situation, but um, I'm looking out for two major multi-billion dollar companies. Financial bottom line. I'm interested in the bottom line as 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 you should um so that is crazy the the fact that she got out of the car and tried to run and didn't get away so like yeah i know so it's like running from a forklift seems kind of easy at first thought but it's like how fast can those go i've been in a forklift before and they're pretty quick they can reach like maybe five miles an hour but i'm like they can't really go that that fast and they can't really go up curbs so i know like a lot of home depots they have like curbs or you could hide near the carts and they, they they'll hit the carts and it might hurt but they'll just push through the they'll push the carts and then you know the forklift won't make it to you there's a lot of ways you can maybe dodge from dodge in between some use the cars you know like like when you're you're playing tag and you're hiding around a tree and you're the the other person's on the other side of the tree and you're on this side and you're like, whoa, and then you step and then, and then you like you step and then they, they try to tag you and you run the other way. That That's a classic kid maneuver. You, this, I know and it, it's probably from just waking up in shock and being like, what the fuck is happening? Why is a forklift chasing me? But you know, I mean, maybe she wasn't like a D one athlete. Maybe she can have run. That's what I'm just saying. Um, it's, it's sad. Um, let's see. Glorenstein Pinckney. Se oh, she was 73. Okay. Yeah, so that makes sense. That's, that's just so sad. That is sad. Um, Jesus Christ. Whew. Brown was identified as a suspect and arrested Sunday evening. The sheriff's office said he was being held without bond at the county detention center. Sheriff's office said no on charges that included first degree murder, second degree murder and assault and theft. It was unclear Monday afternoon whether Brown had retained any attorney. His relatives could not be immediately reached. Attempts to reach Pinckney family were unsuccessful. Interesting. Wow. So that is a crazy story. So there's that. There's that. So let's get let's finish it up with some TikTok time here. What which one do we play for TikTok? I always forget what it is. What is it? It's like a it's like what is it? Happy Okay. What is it? Is it this one? Oh yeah it is. Generic music number six. TikTok time somehow. This is the part of the show where I play TikToks that I have come across that either piqued my interest, made me laugh, um, so anything that I want to share with you. And that's my kind of philosophy here. If I enjoyed it, someone out there must. Or unless unless it's only me. Unless I'm that. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, this one's pretty funny. So this How guy. How do you pronounce your name? 
So this guy, this guy goes, his name is Michael and he goes on. Um, so he just wastes employers time pretty much, which is, which is always funny, which is like, if you can waste someone's time, wasting someone's time is like, it's such a small offense, but it's so funny when you waste someone's time so much. This guy goes onto zoom calls for interviews with, with any records them just trolling the interviewer. So, um, and he's like, you know, he's dressed up professionally. He's done his hair and she's really, she's in it. She thinks she's interviewing a real person. You could either pronounce it Seif or yeah. Deef or Queef or Heef. <laughs> okay, no problem. She's laughing. All right. And whereabouts are you? So geographically speaking, I, it's more like an esoteric thing where it's like a, the genetic properties aren't quite mutated into that kind of formulaic process yet. Yeah, whereabouts? So I take a more, it's like a, like almost like the genetic properties of anything where you have to analyze that more structured nature of the hierarchical tendencies. So I don't kind of analyze it from. <laughs> He's using corporate speak. He's talking at corporate. Also, she is right next to a trash can. From that streamlined mentality. Okay. Um, uh, so are you living in the USA? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Yes. Whereabouts? So. It's like more like like a structured streamlined process in which I kind of integrate the like hierarchical structure almost, I guess. Does that make sense? Or <laughs> I think there's something going on at the moment with this stream. Is it kind of going in and out? Yeah, it's virtually repeating something. Like I just asked you, do you live in the USA? Yes. And you said yes, and yes. I asked whereabouts, but then something else come up. What came up? What was it? I don't know. It was just, yeah, I have no, it was just other... Yeah, talking. So, so whereabouts in the USA are you? I guess I kind of take more of like a streamlined approach. It's not necessarily like a homogenous system of analytical data in which I process. That's like he's interviewing with someone else. And I'll see, I'll see what All right, what's your name? Seif. Seif, so what position are you interested in here at the Weston? So I kind of take more of like a structured system <laughs> to the position. It's more of like a hierarchical nature in which I kind of progress my meetings and my flow and things like that. What is going on? Um, so what position are you interested in here at the Western Portland Harborview? I guess I kind of take a more structured approach. It's more of like a hierarchical system of like an inadical mindset that I kind of take. And I kind of apply that to everything, whether it's teamwork or whether it's this homogenized system that we base. Okay. Um, it was great to meet you and thank you for joining us. And best <laughs> I, there's nothing better than wasting someone's time. There's nothing better. It's there's nothing funnier than wasting someone's time professionally, like as a prof he's monetizing wasting people's time. He's turning their time into his money, which is huge. <clears throat> I love that he talks in corporate and and like fluent in corporate speak. It's crazy. Um, let's see. Oh. There was one video, damn, I don't think I had it uploaded. BlackRock just uploaded a new TikTok. It's a day in the life of BlackRock. Let me see if I can find it. It literally came out, it came up on my For You, you page like yesterday. Let's see. Uh, day in the life at BlackRock. Do they have a TikTok? Where's their TikTok? Um, what is this? In the life as an analyst working at a real estate private equity firm. I wake up early around 5 30 in the morning. Is this BlackRock? Is she working at BlackRock? Okay, give me one second. I'll f I will find the video. Alright, alright, alright. Found it, found it, found it. Okay, this is crazy this video actually it didn't even let me save it i had to literally download i had a screen record download and send it to myself which is absurd it's just like way too hard let me save it and be done with it but here it is so this is like, like this little little asian girl working at blackrock probably one of if not the um single greediest and uh exploitative company besides i guess the pharma and big military technology companies like it goes of evil companies it probably goes pfizer then like lockheed martin then blackrock 
those are like the the holy trinity of um, evil, greed, and uh, destructive uh, self. You know, self destruct not self destructive, just like causing destruction and mayhem, and uh, you know the downfall of modern society as we know it. Um, the hoarding of wealth and uh, you know. It's, it, it's bad. If you don't know who BlackRock is, look into it. They're buying up mass swaths of land almost everywhere. If you're, if you're looking for a home right now and you're finding that you're having trouble because the prices are too high, it is because, um, you know, BlackRock has a major part in, you know, buying up a lot of properties and they buy up the properties because they have so much money. They're investing in the long game. They're buying up so much property that... And for you know increased prices, that they're raising the the cost of areas by they'll buy a whole neighborhood, and they'll buy a whole neighborhood and then set the rates for that whole area because what they buy it at increases the comps of all the areas around it, and then they increase the rents of everywhere around it. It's all they 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 come into an area, they infect it. They're a a, a God, they're what are they? They're 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 a cancer wherever they go. So if you ever hear Black Rocks coming into town, buying up some land, be ready for rent to go up, home prices to go up. Um, I guess it's good news if you already own property or you're a, a, a landlord. In that case, um, you know, good for you. Me for a day in my life as an associate at Black Rock. I started working here <laughs> around four years ago. I love these videos. These BlackRock. The, no, these Day in the Life videos are so funny. And it, the fact that she's at BlackRock. This is like Day in the Life of Lockheed Martin. So every morning we start off with uh, watching the live streams of whatever third world country we just uh, carpet bombed. And uh, we replay it. We check to see, did this detonate early? Did it detonate too late? What were the casualties? What was the casualty per dollar? That The craziest thing is at Lockheed Martin, they probably have a casualty per dollar estimation somewhere in their system there is some accountant that's saying or some scientist that's saying casualty per dollar the fact that that's a thing and you know it these companies track track everything if you want something to grow if you want it met if you want it to grow you have to measure it so they their whole business we're talking about lockheed martin now is casualties of war and if you want that to grow, you have to measure it. So there's a department that's probably their whole job is casualties per dollar. How to get the most casualties for the least amount of dollars. And the fact that that exists creates makes me think that they are maybe the most evil company, Lockheed Martin. Next up, we got, well, Pfizer. Pfizer is, um, you know, they probably have someone who's like their whole, their, they're the risk management how much opium can we give to someone without them becoming addicted and going to the streets for it? They want they want it coming to us. They want them coming to us for their opium so and their opioid addiction. So how much can we give to someone just enough that they're addicted but they don't go to the streets? There's definitely someone looking into that. And BlackRock. They definitely oh, – this girl, she's, a, she's an alien a, analyst. So she's probably – her whole job is to determine, um, you know, how much of a place they have to buy – um, you know, how many, how many locals do they have to displace to increase the value of the property by 10%, you know, whatever. Oh, through the analyst orientation program, I typically get to work at 7 30 AM so I can study for the CFA before beginning the work day at nine. I like to sip on some coffee while checking my emails before picking up any ongoing projects for the week. I'm currently an associate in our retirement solutions team within multi-asset strategies and solutions, MASS for short, here in New York. Retirement Solutions serves as the center for life cycle investing, bringing together experts. Life cycle in, in investing. Who knows what that means? I'm not rich enough to know what life cycle investing means. ...in research, portfolio management, strategy, and technology. Today, I have a client meeting, a presentation to prepare for, and a meeting with my manager. Then it's time for lunch. Today, I grabbed a salad from the cafeteria. One of my favorite parts of the day is whiteboarding new ideas with my team. Now it's 6 p.m. and I'm... God, who knows what, who knows what horrible things have been written on that whiteboard? What horrible things? What, if... If your local town, if your small town has been written on that whiteboard, it's over. Sorry, guys. Pack it up. It's over. All right. 
Let's continue on with some more. A uh, couple. We we got like two more, I guess. Here we go. Um, <laughs> this one's just. This one's just funny. This is why you. This combines my two favorite things: Disney adults this and is... uh, like McDonald's people. Why you still try the ride? I can actually fit on Flight of Passage, but I did not fit on the test seat. <laughs> That's the whole. <laughs> Uh, this is Ver Veronica Ver Veronication. If you want to look her up on TikTok, Veronication. She's on vacation. Her name's Veronica, and she she didn't fit into the test seat for the flight of passage, but she did fit on the ride, which means that she sat through the entire ride knowing that she didn't fit on the test seat, but she wanted to ride it so bad. One, two of my favorite things: Disney adults. Disney adults are their own crazy breed. There's a there's a Disney adult page on on TikTok that literally goes over the m smallest minutia detail of Disneyland and like just goes over it in depth. They're like this week at Disneyland you can look forward to receiving a brand new cup. They're introducing a brand new cup if you go to the uh, Animal Kingdom. It is going to be only there for two weeks, so get it now while you have a chance. That's all. Thanks for thanks for watching my TikTok. That's it's literally that, and it's crazy. It's crazy. But um, all right, let's watch um, let's watch one more. This guy's pretty funny. It's crazy. <clears throat> this guy's pretty funny. Crazy that you can get away with anything as long as you're gay. Watch this. It's so, crazy that you can get away with anything as long as you're so this gay. This guy's just walking along the streets pretending he's gay. Hey, watch this. Slay bitches. Yeah. Slay bitch. <laughs> I like slay. He, and he gets he gets progressively more antagonizing. So he's waving around a pride flag and he's like slay bitch. And he's like he like kind of like this. slay bitches. Yeah. Slay bitch. <laughs> that guy laughs. Slay bitch ass nigga. <laughs> he like bows up to that last guy. <laughs> bitch ass. Uh, it's so good. That guy's so good. I love that. It's it's a harmless prank and it's funny, which is the best. All right. Well, that's all that we had for today. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share with a friend. If you didn't, then um, I'll see you next week. Hopefully, it's better oh wait no that's not it there it is that's it you know what that sound means thanks for listening everyone goodbye <laughs>